Okay, let's take a little bit to sit together, please. I'm gonna push my seat back. Good morning. So you can rest your hands in your lap and let your eyes close. I've been talking for the last couple of weeks about the central channel and this concept that as an antenna, we're all transmitting and we're also receiving. We have both. So when you take your seat and you're coming in to kind of make contact with your inner life, your central channel, just notice how things are upon your arrival this morning. You know, sometimes people come to the yoga practice and they didn't have their most ideal sleep or they have a chattering mind. There's some sort of intrusion or some distraction. And so I'm gonna ask you to use smriti, which we spoke about recently. Smriti means memory or remembering. So use smriti to access any one of the body memories that you have had from a yoga practice where you felt like, oh yeah, you had become integrated, you felt grounded, you had a sense of connection to things. So tap into the memory, the smriti of that, which we could say is more deeply installed than this morning's, let's say mind chatter or um, less than ideal sleep or whatever's happening for you. We wanna to go to the smriti, remembering. And as you breathe into that memory, the remembering, let it become a little bit brighter so it starts to be like a dimmer switch filling up your inner awareness. So you imagine that the inhale is a time where you're brightening the smriti, the remembering. The exhale is a time where you're setting aside that which would distract you or would um, pull you away from that smriti. If you haven't yet, lengthen up through your spine and gently widen your collarbones, set your shoulders back slightly and start to notice the pathway of the breath now and especially check and see if your inhale does include the back of your waist, the kidneys, the back of the heart. And I'm going to ask you to imagine that just as you are sort of bringing your practice up in brightness and readiness, so too are the others who are gathered in the Zoom room. And so there's a, a quality if we were together in person where we would feel the, the raising of energy and concentration. So use your imagination to sense that for yourself right now. And don't leave yourself out of the, the sense that energy can be lifted and strength and clarity can be discovered. And then please bring your hands together at your heart. And this morning we'll chant the Gayatri Mantra together. 
Let's begin. Om Arva Suvaha Tatsavetor Varenyam Bargo Devasyadi Mohi Dio Yona Prachodayata Om Arva Suvaha Tatsavetor Varenyam Bargo Devasya Di Moi Dio Yona Prachodayata Om Arva Suva Tatsavetor Varenyam Pargo Devasya Di Moi Dio Yona Prachodayata Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om You may bow your head to your heart. Release your hands and staying seated. I'm going to transition to my other camera. So I'm going to take a seat on the floor with you. And I would like you there to have your seat and a couple of uh, blocks and a yoga strap as well. We can start by sitting in the pose we call Siddhasana, which is where you line your heels up. So it's um, you put one heel on the inside and one heel on the outside like this and it makes the knees a little bit wider apart yeah versus crossing the ankles which puts the knees a little bit closer together I'll take that from you guys that's not yours mm -hmm. and as you take a seat now lengthen up through your spine lift the base of your skull as we've been doing place your hands out over your knees which i do hope are wider and cup your fingers over the knees to make this stable so that when you're gonna pull up during the pranayama, you can feel that there's some tension. You're lifting up against that tension, the tension of the arms. Okay, so let's start with the head down. And then the ujjayi inhale, beginning lower, middle, and upper, include raising your heart your collarbones, your chin. And then exhale and use the ujjayi exhale to curl down. And this morning, take that into a kind of cat pose spine. And then inhale, begin the breath in the pelvis and the lower belly. But sense one of the primary places of lifting is really in the heart, as if there were a string attached to the heart and it's pulling you up. And then follow your cat pose. And give your full confidence, your, it's called shraddha or faith, your full confidence and faith in the practice. So you're using smriti, which is memory, to remind yourself that your practice has had enough um, clarity or strength or determination that you're here this morning. And then shraddha, faith that this morning's practice is also gonna be nourishing for you, will help you to clarify your mind, your body and your heart. Let's do one more breath like this. Inhale to rise up, keeping the tension of the arms. Lift your heart and look up. 
And then last time, exhale like you're doing cat pose. And then bring your spine to a place that's upright. And pull the hands and elbows back so your shoulders are slightly back behind the heart and the elbows can just sort of drop down from the shoulders. <laughs> Little bits of mischief. Okay, Bastrika, please. Take a brief inhale. Now breathing in, lower, middle, and upper, and bring the breath up to suspension. Exhale smoothly and completely. Tone the low belly, increasing that tone until you have squeezed the low abdomen a little bit like a sponge. And then you radically relax the belly and let the next in-breath come to you. And now repeating, let's begin. Inhale to suspension. Exhale smoothly, completely. With determination, you draw the low belly in towards the end of the exhale, and then deeply relax. Interlace your fingers, take the heels of the hands pointing down. Okay, this is familiar to most of you. Let's inhale, raise up using ujjayi, lower, middle, upper. And as you're raising the arms, raise your eyes at the same rate. And then exhale, bring your hands down behind your head, squeeze the elbows wide, and lift the base of your skull into the sides of the pinkies. And then level your head and twist to your right. Draw the left elbow forward. Knee center. Left. Draw your right elbow forward. Center. Inhale to go up. Ooh. 
This time, exhale, rotate to your right. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, rotate to your left. Inhale, up to center. And exhale, down to the heart. Smriti, remembering. Again, we're going to add to that. So inhale, raising up. Exhale, gazing down. Level your head, inhale, twist your upper body, chest and heart to the right. Exhale to level. Inhale, bring your right elbow forward, twist left. Exhale to center. Okay, inhale, twist right, bring the left elbow forward. Now exhale, side bend, lower the left arm down to your lap. Inhale, rise back up to your twist. Exhale to center. Inhale, right elbow forward. Exhale, side bend to your right. Lower your right arm down. Inhale, up to center in the twist. Exhale, level your head, elbows wide. Now inhale to go up. Exhale, twist right. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, twist left. Inhale, rise up. And exhale down to the heart, Smriti. Release both hands. You bring your right hand up. We're going to be doing five on the left, five on the right, four, four, three, three, two, two, one, one. And for those of you for whom that hasn't gotten mastered or it still feels complicated or you're getting confused, then do five, 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 five and then go to both nostrils. Um, I don't want you to feel like you're having trouble counting or that you're getting the breath confused. This is an on-ramp to Kapalabhati. Okay, so let's let's begin with the left nostril five times.
exhale both nostrils. And then inhale, lower, middle, and upper, inhaling up to suspension. Exhale slowly and completely, toning the lower abdomen as you get to the end of that exhale. And then deeply relax the belly. Okay, and please come up to standing. <laughs> when you come up to standing, go ahead and put your blanket aside. Come up to your horse stance. So we're gonna use horse stance. I'll wear these so they don't get taken by a kitten. And so come down with your two hands on your knees. And in horse stance here, I want you to have the arms straight. So you are having the shoulders shrug towards the ears. Let the torso Sort of dangle down from the shoulders. Okay, so we'll use ujjayi breathing and let's do inhale and then exhale longer than your inhale breath. Now you might make that two counts longer than your inhale, you might make it three or four counts longer, but see what you're able to do here to have the inhale be smooth up to the inhale pause. The exhale longer but without straining and arriving at the exhale pause. And do that about three times more, please. Continue now with the same breath process, but make your feet parallel and come down to Prasara to Parachanasana. Walk the hands out in front. So now your torso is inverted. And again, the position of the arms means that you can't really use the arms to do breathing and you can't use the chest muscles to initiate. So notice the inhale length now and the duration of your exhale. Any greater sense of completing the exhale, any greater access to the upper chest and heart during the inhale. And one more time with the extent that you're able to make the exhale longer than your inhale. And once you have a completion on that exhale, then walk your hands back up to your hips, 
rise up to standing and please step forward for Surya Namaskar. And in Surya Namaskar, we're not going to try to have the exhale be longer than the inhale. We'll just keep them more balanced between inhale and exhale. One moment, please. No playing here. Oh, no, no. That would be very bad because that makes the Wi-Fi work. Yeah, that's why it's covered for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. How about your mouse over there? Okay. All right, please step forward. Join your hands together at your heart. Now, in Surya Namaskar, we're going to practice again Shraddha, faith that the practice that we're having is going to contribute in the direction that we're going. And also Smriti, remembering that you've had other practices that you can also draw from for this confidence. So breathing in, raising up. May exhale, chair pose. Inhale, rise up, upward hand pose. Exhale, Anjali Mudra, coming down and completing the exhale by using a little extra tone with your hands on your blocks. Inhale, glide your heart forward like cow pose. Okay, exhale, left toes back, set your foot firmly. And then inhale, glide upright, crescent arms. Exhale, arms wide, come slowly forward. And as you touch the blocks, inhale, step backwards to plank pose. And then exhale to downward facing dog pose. Breathing in. Broaden the back hemisphere of your body. Exhale, left foot forward. Keep the right toes strong behind you. Inhale, rise up to your crescent lunge, crescent arms. Exhale, bow forward. Touch the blocks this time lightly. We're gonna be stepping forward with the inhale. And exhale for a deep bow to the legs. Use the firmness of your fingers on the blocks to support the completion of your exhale. And inhale, rise up, Ordva Hastasana. Exhale, hands to your heart. Again, inhale. Chair pose. Practicing smriti, remembering. You're right now making a memory that the future you is going to be relying on. We exhale, bow forward and come down. We inhale, glide forward. Like cow pose, bring your heart forward. Exhale, right toes back first. Complete the exhale. Inhale, rise up. Crescent lunge, crescent arms. And exhale. This time, touch the blocks firmly. On your inhale, step back to plank pose. Exhale, downward facing dog pose. Breathe in across the back hemisphere of your body. Exhale, right foot forward. Inhale, rise, crescent. Exhale, descend, touching lightly. Inhale, step forward, heart forward. And a deep bow to the legs. Inhale, rise up. Anjali Mudra, again, Smithy, remembering. Now we're going to increase the pace, but keep it consistent so that it doesn't become rajasic. It's intentional. So here we go. Breathing in. Chair pose. 
rising up, descending, forward, left foot, rising up, descending, plank, downward dog, breathe in, left foot forward, breathing in, rise, descend, forward, downward, upward, inward, again, upward, chair, upward, downward, forward, right toes, rising, descending, plank, downward dog, breathing in, right toes forward, rising, descending, forward, downward, rising, inward. We're going to add to that. Inhale, upward, chair, rising, downward, forward, left toes back, left knee down, Anjane Asana, descending, inhale plank, exhale cow, inhale heart forward seal pose, exhale plank, inhale downward dog, exhale left foot forward, right knee down, Anjane, descending, inhale forward, heart forward, Uttanasana, rising up, into the heart, same thing once more, inhale, chair, rising up, Uttanasana, heart forward, right toes back, right knee down, rising up, descending, Inhale, plank. Exhale, cow pose. Inhale, seal pose. Plank pose. Inhale, downward dog. Right foot forward, left knee down. Rising up. Descending. Inhale, step forward, heart forward. Exhale, deeply bow. 
Inhale, rise up. Back to the heart. Step into horse stance. <laughs> okay. Let's see if they slow down when we slow down. So in horse stance, then Ujjayi inhale again. And let the torso dangle down from your shoulders. So you're not using abdominal muscles to hold your posture. And slowly, breath to breath, you're going to be lengthening the inhale and the exhale. Let's see if you can come back to the exhale being a little bit longer than the inhale. In some cases, you could make your exhale one and a half times as long as your inhale. Please don't strain to make that outcome. Remind yourself that the inhale and the exhale both begin in the lower belly and the pelvic floor, and they both rise up through the torso. And please complete one more breath cycle fully. rise up to standing and set your feet out in what you think of as your prasarata padottanasana distance and i'd like you to have your two blocks you don't yet yet need your strap but you will need it when we sit down so we're going to put the two blocks directly under the shoulders we'll be doing a little twisting practice here and what we'll also be doing is walking the blocks and the feet as if we're going like a sundial and then we'll go to the other side as well. So let me just <laughs> get some real estate here. Okay, so place your blocks and your hands right now directly beneath your shoulders. And level the spine. So you're kind of in table pose here in Prasarata Palatanasana. And let's breathe in through the nose. Now make the left hand firm on the block. And as you exhale, drop your right shoulder, right rib cage, and right arm down. Now keep the left arm very strong, please. And then inhale, press into your left arm and begin twisting to your right. And continue into your twist. Press firmly down with your left arm so the stability of your twist is assured to you and the right arm does not need to express any kind of grasping. When you next exhale, start lowering down, keeping the left arm steady. I would like you again to release your right rib cage, your right shoulder, your right arm. And then inhale just to place your right hand on the block nearest by. Turn your right toes out a couple degrees. Walk your blocks over a few degrees to line up with the angle that you've got your right foot on. So my right foot is about, I don't know, 30 degrees in this direction. Okay, again, inhale. And then let the right shoulder blade, right rib cage, right arm dangle down. Keep the left arm steady. And inhale, press down through your left arm, 
Begin the rotation process, noticing where the strength of your left arm and your right leg together, they stabilize this foundation. Continue into your twist. So the right leg has to be steady, left arm steady. And then lowering down. So you're going to be releasing your right arm, right rib cage, right shoulder blade. Press into your left arm and place your right hand on its block. And then again, turn your toes. Let's go to 45 degrees now. Make the right leg strong and your left arm strong. Please lower your right arm and shoulder down. And now inhale, press down into your left arm, left shoulder, keep it steady and rotate up into your twist. Please keep the right leg steady. So you're gonna press from your right outer hip into your right outer heel. Include all five toes of your right foot. Notice the different kind of strength that you need here and the places where you need it. And as you exhale, start lowering down. And once more, release your right rib cage, right shoulder blade, right arm. And then place your right hand on the block and let's go so that your right foot is now gonna be parallel to the side of your mat. So we would call that more like um, 90 degrees turn from where we started. Okay, so both hands on your blocks. Let's take a deep breath in. And then lower your right arm down again. So the left arm is steady, it's very strong. Inhale, press into your left hand, left shoulder, left arm, start rotating. Keep the right hip steady. Reach into your right outer heel, all five toes. Notice the places where your body needs strength. And then exhale and lower your right hand down to its block. Relax the pose. Now in reverse, press into your right arm. So right arm and right leg, right toes. Rotate your pelvis to your left. Open to triangle pose. So now the right arm, you can say, and left leg, they have big responsibilities. So does your right leg, of course. But try to sense when you press into your right arm, what message does that send into your left outer hip and your left outer heel? And how does this support the twist you have to your left now? And follow your exhale to come down and release your left arm lower than your right arm. Then place your left hand on the block and let's go to 45 degrees. Turn your right foot in, walk the blocks in. Watch out for your, your pets. Okay, let the left arm dangle a little bit like that elephant trunk we talked about weeks ago. Press into the strength of your right arm. Begin rotating your pelvis to your left. So again, try to find the relationship between your right arm and your left outer hip and then down into your left heel. Notice in this variation on triangle pose, trikonasana, what's happening with the breath? as you sustain and nourish your pose. And exhale and lower down and keep the right arm particularly strong. Let the left shoulder blade and left rib cage and left shoulder descend. And then come into about 30 degrees from where we began. Turn your right foot in at that angle as well. Okay. Let the left shoulder blade drop down. So we're looking for some flexibility between the shoulder blades and the spine. 
and the rib cage as well. Okay, root into your right arm. Begin the rotation. Check again from your right arm strength to your left hip strength. And raise your left arm. This again is another kind of variation of triangle pose. So noticing what are the nuances for you? And when you exhale to lower down, you're gonna let the left arm again come into that bit of a deficit. Left shoulder blade, left rib cage. And then bring this back to what we'll call neutral. So make your feet parallel and your hands can be shoulder width apart. I'll just scoot over a little bit, okay, honey? You stay right there. Let's give a little rest to the wrists and the shoulders. So you'll come into a, a like reflecting moment and let's practice again, Smriti, remembering that even at this moment in this practice, you're making a body memory that your future you is gonna be relying on. Even if that future you is an hour from now, is a couple days from now, is a few years from now, you're basically installing the experience of yoga that becomes more easily remembered. And so let's now rise up and we're gonna place the right hand firm. I'll just get a little real estate here on my own yoga mat. Okay, let the left arm dangle down. So that's called coming into the deficit because I don't have a better way to describe it. And I would like you then to press from your right lung, right rib cage, right side of your torso, right shoulder and arm to initiate this twist that goes to your left. And then follow your exhale to come down Return to that place where there's a deficit. Notice your right shoulder blade and your right rib cage getting some space between them. And then let's place the left hand on the block and we'll go about 30 degrees, just a short turn. And the foot, your left foot can also turn. Breathe in. Let's exhale, release your left shoulder, left rib cage, left arm. Keep the right arm steady. And then pressing down in the strength of your right arm. Please twist to your left. And keep the left leg strong. So your left leg and your right arm are working together on this kind of um, cross hemisphere process. And release slowly. Right arm steady. Left arm really relaxed. Place your left hand on the block and let's go for 45 degrees. Energize both legs, but let the left arm drape down. And then with your inhale begin, it's the right arm that initiates and the left arm I like to say is like a decoration in this case. So no sense of grasping with the top arm in these twists. Notice the responsibility of your left leg, left outer hip. And slowly release this one. And we're gonna be going to that 90 degree mark, what you might think of as your more traditional rotation. So walk your blocks around to bookend your left foot. Turn your left foot so it's parallel to the mat. Steady your left outer hip to your left outer heel into all five toes. Drop the left arm down. And then rooting down, begin to rotate. There's gonna be responsibilities in both legs, but I want you to prioritize your right arm and your left leg. And then as you lower down, we're gonna place the left hand, go ahead and go directly to your block. 
Level your hips. Press down into your left arm and use the strength there to reverse the direction that we're going. So you're gonna press into your left arm and notice what that does to activate your right outer hip. Reach down into your right outer heel. Noticing where you have access to a kind of freedom in your body in any place that needs your respect and attention. And then as you exhale, lower your right arm down and let it come down into that deficit so you've got a sense of the left leg is still steady. Left arm is still steady. Come up to both blocks. Let's go in at about 30 degrees from where we are. It's kind of like, I guess I could say the, um, whatever you want to call that. <laughs> Okay, release the right arm down. Let the left arm be strong. And press down. We're going to start rotating. Keep the left shoulder rolled back so it's not crunching up towards your right ear. I see mischief happening with the kitten. Oh, she's got it. She's under the computer. Okay, you guys can release down and then do the next turn, the next angle. Hi, honey. You can't be under there. No, no. That's a very bad place for a kitten to be. Yeah. And you're smaller than your brother, so he couldn't get in there, but you could. Yeah. Release that one that you were just doing that I was not doing with you. And let's come back to center and give a little rest again. And now is the time to come onto your seat with your blanket and your strap. Yep, watching out. All kittens beware. Yep. Yes. <laughs> okay, so yesterday we were doing a, a practice with the yoga strap and John Osir Sassen, and I'd like to repeat that, but I want to give an option, an idea for those of you whose strap is not long enough. So let me show first with the strap, opened up and long. We're gonna do the left leg out to the side first this morning. Pardon me. And the right foot comes down to Siddhasana, also called Janasirasana. <laughs> okay, All right. there we go. So you're gonna put the strap over your kitten now you're going to put it over the left foot like this. And you want the loop to be large enough that you can put your right hand in there behind you. So that what's happening is you've got some tension on the right wrist because of the strap. So you put your right hand in the strap behind you and that little bit of tension causes a stabilization of your twist. It's going to help your right shoulder to participate in the twist a little bit better. Okay, so this is the base version if you have a long enough strap to do this with. If your strap is a little bit short, my recommendation is that you bend the left knee. And so you have, you have to hook this to your ankle and then you still have the loop behind you to slip your um, wrist into it. So it's surrounding the wrist. My real interest here is, yeah, your left leg is important but I'm really interested in how you can access your right upper chest and heart, how you can support the twist. So please walk your left hand across to your right thigh. And with the yoga strap around your right wrist, set your right shoulder back firmly, almost like you're doing cobra pose in the upper back. And then just give attention to what the breath can do. So what I mean by that is, are you able to have the breath come into the upper chest and heart? 
Do you have a sense of where the exhale pathway is? Now, if you press into the strap with either your foot or your wrist and make it a little bit taut, walk your right hand slightly back, make a little feeling of cobra pose and begin to lean backwards without letting go of your left hand at your right outer thigh. I do want your left fingers to feel firm there and I do want your right wrist to feel firmly held by the strap. This little bit of back bending is really intended to have the back bend be up in the heart. And very slowly bring yourself back up until you are centered. Release your right wrist from the strap. Turn about to come forward and relax a moment right there. You'll probably sense the warming going down your right arm. Notice what happens to the mind. I'm going to take the other side so you can bring your left foot in, right leg out. Put the strap around your right foot. Take it around behind you. When you put your left hand in the strap, your left fingers are going to go to the floor. So your left arm behind you is like this. My right arm is in front of me right now, but you've got the strap around your wrist. So it's it's closing a chain of action to give you more um, cohesion and therefore a different kind of possibility in the pose. You walk your right hand over to the outside of your left thigh, left hand behind you. And give good attention first to the, the pathways of the breath. Do you have a sense that the inhale can come into the upper chest and heart? What do you sense as the pathway of your exhale? What is going on in there? Remind yourself, Smriti is a practice of memory or remembering, including that you're making a body memory right now in this practice that, as I said before, it becomes a resource for you. And also that your practice helps to revive your confidence in the yoga in your life. So making the tension on the strap now strong enough that your left wrist is stable, right fingers stay steady where they are, and begin to come into a little seated back bend. Don't worry if you can't go very far. Don't unhinge the stability of the pose. Don't give up on your fingers on your thigh or the tension on the strap. And slowly, slowly bring yourself back upright. Release and unwind and you may notice that your left arm has a warming response. Mm -hmm. 
I also hope you notice that the pose itself has a mentally calming effect. We'll put that aside. <laughs> mentally calming for humans. The strap is not mentally calming for kittens. Okay, please come down onto your back. We're gonna do bridge pose and fish pose. And having a yoga strap, some of you will need the yoga strap for your bridge pose. And then you'll still have it there for your fish pose. Others are gonna clasp the hands under the small of the back. So place your feet so that they are hip distance apart and parallel. Center your spine, your head and your mind. Root down into your heels, your toes. Raise your hips starting at the tailbone. Reach under and either use your yoga strap or interlace your fingers to tuck your shoulders under. So as you scoot the shoulders under, then emphasize the strength of each shoulder, upper arm, and then the forearms, and then the sides of the hands, the sides of the pinkies, and your heels and your toes. Let's keep the breath smooth, the mind steady, practicing shraddha, that means faith or confidence, and also practicing smriti, remembering. Then we're gonna slowly lower your hips down, but keep the back bend of the heart. If you had your hands clasped, now interlace your thumbs, turn your palms face down. You're coming down to sit on the back of your forearms and the back of your wrists. In my case, you're also sitting on your kitten. There we go. <laughs> so when you sit on the back of the arms now, place the palms flat, straighten the legs out, root down into your elbows, lift your chest and heart without pulling your hair and come into fish pose. Press the chest and the heart up, the shoulders back. Please be thoughtful about your neck in fish pose. It's really most important that you lift the heart as if there were a string attached to the center of the sternum. And then glide down on the back of your head, release your arms and come to this basic Shavasana. Notice that there's probably a warming effect that's going down your arms right now. Send your mind down into your hands, fingers and thumbs. And notice the gentle warming that's going on until your hands become neutral once more.
Allow yourself to deeply relax. The part of you that guides your practice from wisdom on the inside, that part is taking care of you right now. The mind that manages your to-do list can be deeply at ease. Let yourself remain very still, both your body and your thinking mind. Sense the intelligence in you. It's taking care right now. Observe the body and the mind getting more and more still. We're also sensing this palpable movement of prana.
Don't let the mind wander. Noticing the inner intelligence and wisdom as your body and your mind get very still. Now imagine yourself being remembered like a wave coming back to the ocean. All of the particles, the wave, wherever it's been, whatever its adventures, being welcomed back by the ocean. Everything else becomes foam on the ocean. This remembering is the sweetness you may lightly wiggle your fingers, your toes. Please bend your knees. Make a transition, please, into your seat. Please join your hands together at your heart. Thank you very much, everyone. Namaste. I'm going to come up where I can see you closer. How are you?